in good health tonight with every beat of your heart. Blood is pumped through your aortic valve into your body. By the time we are 65, that valve has opened and closed over 2 billion times and perhaps not surprisingly, serious problems can develop. Dr. Frank Matorich joins us now with recent FDA changes that make a less invasive treatment option available to more people. Yeah, this is really cool, Karen and Jason. I remember reporting on one of the earliest Metro Detroit patients to have a transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR. That was over a decade ago. At that time, it was essentially experimental and it could only be done on the sickest patients who basically would not survive an open heart surgery. Things have changed. Probably eight or 10 years ago, my time just got less and less and really didn't put two and two together. Get an equal amount on each of the pots. Albert Bordine is a very active man who used to cycle regularly, but several years ago, he was diagnosed with aortic stenosis and it's progressed. I tried to walk two miles yesterday and didn't, couldn't hardly make it. I couldn't walk, I had to just barely step to, to get through it. Aortic stenosis occurs in some people when the aortic valve becomes calcified and narrow, causing the heart to beat harder and decreasing the blood flow to the body. Common symptoms can include increasing fatigue, shortness of breath with exertion, and even suddenly passing out. For at least 60 years, the standard treatment for severe aortic stenosis has been to replace the valve through open heart surgery. Surgery was available, but they, that was crack the chest type. Uh, which I, that's pretty heavy to just recover from. It takes about a month to recuperate from an open heart operation. But the catheter procedure to replace the valve is much less invasive. One or two nights stay in the hospital and then they go home, they're able to get back to normal activity within 48 hours. Dr. William O'Neill is the medical director of the Structural Heart Disease Center at Henry Ford Hospital. We did a head-to-head -head comparison of patients that are low surgical risk where they got surgery versus TAVR. And in fact, the people that got TAVR had a better outcome. There was a lower mortality and a better uh, one in three year outcome. That research and a decade's worth of other developments and experience led the FDA to approve the TAVR procedure for even low surgical risk patients, not only for people who wouldn't survive surgery. Well, Mr. Bordon is really robust, as you can see. Previously, we couldn't have been able to qualify him for a TAVR procedure. He would have had to have heart surgery. So now with the new approval, uh, if he wants to have a TAVR, he can look into it and we can offer it to him. Here's a simplified explanation of how TAVR is done. A catheter is placed into the femoral artery in your groin and a wire is threaded up to the heart and through the calcified valve. A special device is threaded over the wire, positioning the new valve in place. Once the placement is confirmed, it's open, pushing the diseased valve out of the way and anchoring the new valve in place. Generally, 80, 90% of the people that previously had surgical valve replacement now are eligible for having a non-invasive method of fixing the valve. Maybe I can get 10 more years of healthy activity until something else might go wrong. Now, Mr. Bordine had the TAVR procedure done, and he's doing great. He's even back to exercising. There are actually some unusual circumstances where this procedure can't be done, and someone would still need the bigger surgery. But frankly, for the majority of people, this will become the standard. It really is cool through that graphic to see how that works. Yeah, and it beats the heck out of open heart surgery right. for sure. Yes, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doc. Sure. Now here's a look at what I'm working on for tomorrow at 5.